हेलो एवरीवन आई डॉक्टर ज्योति पिल्ले बिला इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी सी एस बी टी विल बी डिस्कसिंग ऑन द टॉपिक ग्राफ ट्रैवर्सल लेट सी वॉट इज ए ग्राफ ग्राफ इज ए डेटा स्ट्रक्चर दैट कंसिस्ट ऑफ ए सेट ऑफ नोट्स वर्टिस पॉइंट्स एंड ए सेट ऑफ एडजेस ऑल्सो नोन इज लिंक्स एरोज आर्क्स और लाइन्स a graph g is defined as g equal to ve where vg is a finite non empty set of vertices or nodes eg is a set of edges used to connect these vertices or nodes the vertices could be internal graph elements or external items represented by integer indices or references the set of edges describes relationships among these vertices or the nodes some of the graph ter terminologies which will be using in the graph traversal first is adjacency adjacency can be of two types adjacent or neighbor nodes connected to each other through an edge that is those nodes which are connected to each other through an edge are called as adjacent or neighboring nodes both the vertices are end points of the same edge for example in the graph g1 vertex v1 has two adjacent nodes v2 and v3 adjacent edges two distinct edges that share an end vertex for example in the graph g1 edges e1 and e2 share the same end vertex v2 cycle a path from a vertex to itself is called a cycle a graph is called cyclic if it contains a cycle otherwise it can be called as a cyclic for example in the graph an edge starts from 1 1 to 2 2 to 4 4 to 1 so this forms a cycle similarly another cycle exists in this graph between the nodes 4 and 5 so this graph can be called as a cyclic graph next non directed graph a graph g equal to ve is called a non directed graph if all the edges present between any two nodes are non directed in a non directed graph undirected edge has no orientation that is no arrow head it is difficult to identify starting and ending nodes of edge in the case of non directed graph for example in the graph g1 there are four vertices a b c and d and there are four edges between the vertices which are not directed so edge between the vertices a and b does not have any direction so cannot be determined whether edge starts from a or edge starts from b similarly we cannot determine the ending vertex of the edge which is there between a and b directed graph a graph g equal to ve which has every edge mapping onto some ordered pair of vertices v1 and v2 or vi and vj is called a directed graph or digraph all edges of the digraph are directed that is in directed graph it is easy to determine from which node it is starting and at which node it is ending director edge has an orientation that is it has got an arrow head in the case of director head for example in the graph g1 all the edges are directed that is for example e1 even, even is starting from the vertex v1 and is ending at vertex v2 e2 the vertex v2 is the starting node of the edge e2 and vertex v3 is the ending vertex of the edge e2 similarly e4 starts from v2 and ends at v4 so using the direction of the arrow it can be determined what is the starting node and which is the ending node of any edge in the case of directed graph now adjacency list an adjacency list represents a graph as an array of linked list the index of the array represents a vertex 
and each element in its linked list represents the other vertices that form an edge with the vertex. For example, in the graph, if we consider first the vertex 0, 0 points to 1, 1 points to 2, 2 points to 3. That says, the adjacency list of 0 will be containing the vertices or you can say neighbors of the node 0, 1 and 2 and 3. Vertex 1, the adjacency list for vertex 1 will be consisting of 0 and 2, its neighbors. 2 will be consisting of 0 and 1 in its adjacency list. 3 will be having 0 in its adjacency list. Now, what is a graph traversal? Graph traversal is a technique used for searching a vertex in a graph. Graph tra traversal means visiting all the nodes of the graph at least once. Graph traversal can be used to decide the order of vertices visited in the search process. Graph traversal finds edges to be used in the search process without creating loops. Graph traversal is of two types. First, depth first search DFS and second, breadth first search BFS. Today, we are going to discuss about depth first search algorithm DFS. Depth first traversal or depth first search is a recursive algorithm for traversing or searching all vertices of the graph data structure. The DFS algorithm starts at the root node that is selecting some arbitrary node as the root node in the case of the graph and explores as far as possible along each branch before backtracking or until the node with no children is found. The main idea of DFS algorithm is to go as deep as possible and to come back or backtrack when there is no unvisited vertex remaining such that it is adjacent to its current vertex. DFS implementation. A standard DFS implementation puts each vertex of the graph into one of the two categories. First, visited list, second, non-visited list. The purpose of the algorithm is to mark each vertex as visited while avoiding cycles. DFS uses a stack to remember to get the next vertex for starting the search when a dead end occurs in any of the iterations. DFS explores any path as long as possible until no cycle is formed. When it hits a dead end, it backtracks to the just previous state. So, we need a data structure that can give us the most recent element or the most recent call. The stack serves this purpose that is last in first out. So, DFS uses the stack data structure for its implementation. The queue cannot be used to implement DFS as it is based on the opposite concept that of that of the stack that is first in first out FIFO method which is not suitable for DFS algorithm. The DFS algorithm works as follows. Step 1, create a stack with maximum size equal to the total number of vertices in the graph. Step 2, initially stack and visited arrays are empty. Step 3, start by putting graphs any one of the vertices on top of the stack. Arbitrarily select one of the node and put it at the top of the stack. Step 4, take the top item of the stack that is pop out the top element of the stack and add it to the visited list. Step 5, create a list of that vertex adjacent nodes. Step 6, add vertices which are int in the visited list onto the top of the stack. 
step 7, keep repeating step 4 to 6 until the stack is empty. That is, pop out the top element from the stack and then put it in the visiting list and this process will be continued until the stack is empty. DFS algorithm can be further elaborated using another concept of steps. Step 1, set status is equal to 1, ready state for each node in G. Step 2, push the starting node A on the stack and set its status as 2, that is its waiting state. Step 3, repeat the steps 4 and 5 until the stack is empty. Step 4, pop the top node N, process it and set its status as 3, that is the process state. Step 5, push into the stack all the neighbors of the N that are in the ready state, that is whose status is equal to 1 and set their status as 2, that is the waiting state. So, these steps 4 and 5 will be repeated until the stack is empty. Step 6, exit out of the DFS algorithm. Let us consider an example of DFS. Consider an undirected graph here with 5 vertices. Here we have got 5 vertices 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. In step 1, let us consider two arrays visited and stack and initially both the arrays are empty, both the lists are empty. Now, step 2, we have to select a vertex, any arbitrary vertex or node. So, let us start with the vertex 0. The DFS algorithm starts by putting it in the visited list and putting all its adjacent vertices which are not visited, that is 1, 2, 3 into the stack, 1, 2 and 3 are adjacent nodes of 0. So, 0 is put in the visited list and all the adjacent nodes of 0 are put in the stack, that is 1, 2, 3 are put into the stack. In step 3, now node 1 is at the top of the stack. So, visit the node n and pop it from the stack and put it adjacent nodes which are not visited in the stack. So, since 0 has already been visited, so visit 2 and push it into the stack. Step 4, now node 2 is at the top of the stack. So, visit that node 2, pop it from the stack and put all its adjacent nodes which are not visited that is 4 into the stack. So, visited list now contains 0, 1 and 2, stack is containing the elements 4 and 3. Step 5, 4 is at the top of the stack. So, visit node 4, pop it from the stack and push all of its adjacent nodes which are not visited into the stack. Since there are no unvisited neighbors of the node 4, so 3 will be at the top of the stack. Step 6, now since node 3 is at the top of the stack, visit node 3 and pop it from the stack and put all of its adjacent nodes which are not visited into the stack. After the last element 3 is visited, it does not have any unvisited adjacent nodes. So, here the depth first traversal or depth first search algorithm of the graph is completed. After the last element 3 is visited, it does not have any unadjusted data elements, unvisited adjacent nodes. So, visited list will be consisting of the nodes 0, 1, 2, 4 and 3, that is all the nodes have been visited and DFS is completed. Now, let us consider another example. Here, this graph is a directed graph, where each of the edges is having n direction, an arrowhead. Adjacency list for all the 
nodes have been created. That is adjacency list of A consists of B D, adjacency list of B consists of C and F, adjacency list C will be consisting of E G H, G is having the adjacency list as E and H, B F are the elements in the adjacency list of E, F is having only one element in its adjacency list A, D is having one element F in its adjacency list, H is having only one node in its adjacency list. Now, let us start traversing the graph from node H that is DFS implementation on the graph will be step 1 push H into the stack stack will be consisting of one element h. Step 2 pop top element from stack that is h and print it print h and then push all the neighbors of h into the stack that are in ready state. Okay. So, stack will be consisting of one element a. Step 3 pop top element from the stack that is a and print it that is print a push all the neighbors of A into the stack that are in the ready state. Stack will be consisting of B and D. Step 4, pop top element from stack that is D and print it. Push all neighbors of D into the stack that are in the ready state. That is now F has been pushed into the stack. So, stack will be consisting of B and then F. Step 5, pop top element from stack that is f and print it and then push all neighbors of f into the stack that are in the ready state. Okay. So, there are no unvisited graph uh, elements. So, stack is equal to b. Step 6 pop top element from stack b and print it push all neighbors of b into the stack that are in ready state that is stack will be consisting of c now. Step 7 pop top element from stack that is C and print it, push all neighbors of C into the stack that are in ready state that is stack will be consisting of E and G. Step 8, pop top element from stack that is G and print it, push all the neighbors of G into the stack that are in ready state. There are no unvisited neighbors of G, so stack will be consisting of E. Step 9, pop top element from the stack that is E and print it, push all the neighbors of the E into the stack that are in ready state. Now, there are no unvisited neighbors of E, so stack is empty. Now, since all the graph nodes have been traversed and the stack is empty, so DFS algorithm has been completed. DFS algorithm traverses a graph in a depth word motion. A graph can have more than one DFS traversal. For example, in the graph DFS traverses from S to A, A to D, D to G, G to E to B first and then to F and lastly to C. So, that is one traversal. DFS employs following rules. Rule 1, visit the un adjacent unvisited vertex, mark it as visited, display it, push it into the stack. Rule number 2, if no adjacent vertex is found, pop up a vertex from the stack, pop up all vertices from the stack, which do not have adjacent vertices. Rule number 3, repeat rule number 1 and rule number 2 until the stack is empty. Similarly, we can have an example where DFS will be moving from one node to another node till all the nodes have been visited at least once. Output of a depth first search algorithm. The result of a DFS of a graph can be described in terms of a spanning tree of the vertices reached during the search. Based on the spanning tree, the edges of the original graph can be divided into three classes forward edges, an edge that is not present in the DFS tree after applying DFS and it connects a node of the tree to one of its descendants or successors. 
back edge an edge that is not present in the DFS tree after applying DFS and it connects a node to one of its ancestors. Its presence indicates a cycle in the directed graph. Cross edge an edge which neither point to its ancestor or successor that is an edge that is not present in the DFS tree after applying DFS and it connects a node to another node where there is no parent child relationship between the two nodes. Next is tree edge an edge that is present in the DFS tree after applying DFS on the graph. If the original graph is undirected then all of its edges are tree edges or back edges. Consider the directed graph G 1 applying DFS on it will give the following order that is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 is the order of the vertices visited. So, tree edge is a an edge between the nodes 0 and 1, back edge is an edge from 4 to 1, forward edge is an edge from 1 to 2, cross edge is an edge from 4 to Time complexity for the DFS algorithm can be calculated as the time complexity depends on the data structure in which the graph is stored. If an adjacency list is used to represent the graph, its time complexity ends up as O V plus E, where V is the number of vertices in the graph and E is the number of edges in the graph. Proof of the formula is the algorithm travels each node and each edge exactly once. So, that is where O V plus E is the time complexity. If adjacency matrix is used to represent the graph, its complexity will be equal to O V raise to 2 or O V into V, where V is the number of vertices in the graph. Proof of this formula is the algorithm travels over each edge and each node exactly once, but to find the next neighboring node we need to traverse over all other nodes. Space complexity, the DFS algorithms space complexity is O V, where V is the number of nodes in the graph graph representation takes O V plus E memory space when using adjacency list and O V into V memory when using adjacency matrix. So, space complexity depends upon the type of structure data structure used for representing the graph. If adjacency list is used O V plus E is the space complexity. If adjacency matrix is used O V raise to 2 is the complexity. Proof is that memory is allocated only for marking the nodes that have been visited. As there are V nodes we may require O V memory. Further the depth of the regression tree also matters as it consumes the stack memory. The maximum depth for the recursion tree is the longest path from the starting node to any other node in its connected component, which can be O V in the worst case scenario. Now, let us see about the vertex orderings when DFS is implemented. DFS can be used to linearly order the vertices of a graph or a tree. There are four possible ways of ordering the vertices by using DFS. A pre ordering is a list of vertices in the order that they were first pushed or put in the visited list by the DFS algorithm. A pre ordering of an expression tree is the expression in Polish notation. A post ordering is a list of vertices in the order that they were last visited by the algorithm or pushed into the stack. A post ordering of an expression tree is the expo expression in reverse Polish notation. A reverse pre ordering is the reverse of the pre ordering that is a 
list of the vertices in the opposite order of their first visit. Reverse pre-ordering is not same as post-ordering. A reverse post-ordering is a reverse of a post-ordering scenario that is a list of vertices in the opposite order of their last visit. Reverse post-ordering is not same as pre-ordering. For example, in the directed graph G1, beginning at the node A, pre-orderings are A, B, D and then C or A, C, D and B. Like I have said that there can be more than one DFS traversal. Post-orderings are D, C, B, A and D, then B, then C, then A. Reverse pre-orderings are C, D, B, A and B, D, C, A. Reverse post-orderings are A, B, C, D and A, C, B, D. Now, there are different applications of the DFS algorithm. There are some real life applications of using DFS algorithm. First is topological sorting. DFS algorithm can be used to implement the topological sorting. Topological sorting is used to schedule the jobs based on the dependencies between them. In computer science, sorting or topological sorting arises in instruction scheduling, ordering formula data serialization, logic synthesis, determining the order of compilation tasks and cell evaluation when recomputing formula or values in the spreadsheets. Second application is path finding. The DFL algorithm can be used to discover a path between two specified vertices can be used to keep track of the path between the start vertex and the current vertex using a stack. Return a path as the contents of the stack as soon as destination vertex is encountered. Hence, path can be determined. Third application can be detecting a graph's cycle. A graph has a cycle if and only if a back edge is visible during DFS. DFS can be implemented on the graph to look for rare edges for detecting cycles in the graph. So, DFS can be used to detect a graph cycle or whether to determine a cyclic graph. Solving mazes and other puzzles with only one solution can be done using DFS that is DFS algorithm is also used for one solution puzzles by including only those nodes of the current path in the visited set DFS is used to locate all the keys to a maze or a puzzle. DFS can also be used for testing whether the graph is bipartitic or not. DFS can be used to color a new vertex opposite its parents when it, it is discovered first and check that each other edge does not connect two vertices of the same color. A connected component's first vertex can be either red or black. In bipartited graph, there may be two different sets and an edge from u to v, u will be belonging to one set and v will be belonging to another set. So, DFS can be used to determine whether the graph is bipartite or not. DFS can be used for finding strongly connected components in a graph. A directed graph is strongly connected if each vertex in the graph has a path to every other vertex. DFS can be used to find strongly connected components. In the case of the DFS algorithm, the 
connected components only can be traced using the DFS. So, whether a graph is connected or not can be determined by using DFS algorithm. Thank you.